I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan. Joining us now, a legendary Zag and co-host of the Dickow and Slim Show on Spokane's 700 ESPN. Dan Dickow joins us to talk Gonzaga BYU on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Dan, welcome to the show. How are you this morning? Things are well. It's just nice that uh, we get to talk about a, a GU-BYU matchup uh, because, with as you guys know, this topsy-turvy COVID-impacted season you never know what the schedule is going to hold. And I'm glad they were able to get this one kind of moved up to allow some other games to be played over these next few weeks. Amen to all of that. I'm not sure there's anybody that would know this Gonzaga team better than you, other than Mark Few, based on how closely you follow them, what you mean to the program. So let's start here. Is this the best Gonzaga team you have ever seen play basketball in Spokane? Well, they're up there. It's to be determined, that's for sure. That uh, 2017 team that uh, lost to your BYU Cougars in McCarthy to kind of ruin the undefeated run before they went to the Final Four and title game uh, definitely has, you know, some claim to that title right now. Defensively, that team was, was phenomenal, and they were very good on offense. Cheers team is unbelievable on offense, and they're getting better on defense. Uh, I think number one or number two offensive efficiency, depending on what Baylor uh, has done over the last week. Uh, and then defensively, you know, they're getting better. As I mentioned, their efficiency numbers are, are starting to, to go in the right direction. Um, you know, but again, this team is going to win games based off of their offense. And if they win a title, it will be because of their defense. The expectations are so high uh, in, in Spokane. Um, what, in fact, we were at the WCC Media Days a couple of years ago when St. Mary's actually was picked to win the league, and we talked to Randy Bennett and Mark Few that day, and we were like, Randy, I'm really sorry. This is just – it's got to be tough to win this league, right? So is it Final Four or National Championship or bust? Is that the expectations? It kind of feels that way when you talk to people around Spokane. And, and I think part of it is because Baylor and Gonzaga have distanced themselves from everybody else in the field this year. Um, you know, GU being uh, number one in the preseason and then just coming out right off the bat and, and smacking Kansas, West Virginia, uh, Iowa, Virginia. Um, you know, it, it definitely has given a lot of credence to, to that preseason number one ranking. Um, but you always hate to say, hey, if they don't make a Final Four, uh, the season is a waste. Because, again, at the end of the day, so many times the season is about the journey of, of start to finish and what has happened. Um, but I do know there will be a lot of disappointment if by chance they don't get there. Vancouver, Washington's finest. Dan Dickow with us on BYU Coof. Sports Nation. Seriously. So I get home the other night and uh, rolling in from work, um, and I noticed that, Pacific and Gonzaga are like a three point game with nine minutes to play. And my wife says to me, Whoa, that's unexpected. And I said, You know, you just watch. Gonzaga's going to win this just game by wait. like 20. Just They're going to win by like 20 because that's what they do. Dan, at any point, were you concerned with where Gonzaga was against Pacific? Or are you concerned about anything that they will face going forward in the West Coast Conference? No, I wasn't concerned. And the reason why is because. Pacific got absolutely smacked in Spokane about two weeks before that game. Uh, it was like 31 to five or something right off, right out of the gates. Uh, Damon Stoudemire, I think is a very good coach. I think he's underrated nationally. I will say this. He's not going to be at Pacific long. There's going to be a, an opening at a bigger big time job and he's going to get it and he's going to take that program um, and have a lot of success. So you knew they were going to be prepared. You knew they were going to play, uh, much harder than they did in Spokane. And quite frankly, this is an interesting year. You go on the road, you got to find ways to create your own e energy. And Gonzaga is going to have that kind of question tonight when they play at the Marriott Center. Usually you, you're able to kind of gear up, know there's 19, 20,000 fans that are right on top of you being extremely loud and boisterous. Can Gonzaga create energy with from within as opposed to having to create it based off of a curve? Out and you're going to see some games like that throughout the course of the season. On January 7th, these two teams uh, hurriedly met in the kennel and uh, Gonzaga won convincingly by 17, led by 32 in the game. Do you expect something similar or do you expect a closer margin game with BYU this time around? 
Well, I, I think, it, to be honest, I think in the WCC this year, there's a large gap. Gonzaga, then BYU, and then from BYU to everybody else, there's a very large gap as well. I think BYU is an absolute tournament team. I think when I looked at the net the last time yesterday or the day before, they were maybe 28, 29, somewhere in there. Uh, they're a very good team. When you look at their resume, their only losses are that Gonzaga game you mentioned, USC, who should be in the tournament, Boise State, who should be in the tournament, uh, and then Pepperdine, which um, Pepperdine's talented. Coach Romar's doing a nice job of, of getting some uh, excitement going in that program. And so I, I really think it will be a good game, but I'll just be honest. I think Gonzaga is going to end up with the win. Uh, understandably, uh, you and Dan, everybody so in Vegas wait, Dan, and everybody so around wait. the world, <laughs> including us here at Studio B, feeling like, yeah, Gonzaga is probably going to win this game. Now, it, if there is any weakness within this Zags team, what what is it? What, where is it? Because we can't see it. You know, I, I think the biggest weakness is front court depth. Drew Timmy is uh, he's putting together an All American type season. Um, whether or not he gets that accolade, it's hard to say because I think Kispert at this moment is a lock. Kispert, there's a good chance he will be the National Player of the Year, which would be an awesome honor for Gonzaga. But if you if you look at, at Gonzaga's front court, Balo's out with an injury now, probably another two weeks ish. Um, so Coach Few has definitely not got comfortable playing uh, Zakharov, the seven foot sophomore from Russia. Um, they've slid Watson to the five at times, um, which puts Kispert at the four in, in different lineups. Um, so can a team pin fouls on Timmy early in the game to make it interesting and put coach few in a bind where he has to make a decision. Do I put him back in? Uh, do we change our lineup? How do we play? Um, but I really, I think that's the really the only kind of question mark about Gonzaga this year. Hope is a powerful emotion. Despair is also powerful. Every year, BYU goes into the league, and I think, well, second would be great. What's the secret <laughs> sauce with Mark Few in this program? Because what he has done is as dominating as anybody has done in any sport in NCAA history. Well, you get, I get asked that question a lot um, from different kind of media outlets. There really is no special kind of recipe to what Gonzaga has done. There's a number of things that you can kind of look at and say, these things are important. One, um, the consistency within the coaching staff. I mean, Mark Few is an assistant under uh, Dan Fitzgerald and Monson for 10 years or so, and they started building uh, what was becoming Gonzaga basketball. Now you've got Tommy Lloyd. He's been an assistant coach there for, for 20 years. Brian Michelson's been there for you know 10 to 12 years in different capacities. Roger Powell Jr. is now in his second year, but he's showing tremendous signs of, of being a guy that could be there for quite some time if he doesn't have an opportunity to, to leave for a head coaching job himself. So there's been a consistency of coaching staff and the message that they put to their players. And with that message, it's a message of, hey, when we're, when we're recruiting you and we're evaluating you, are, you got to be skilled enough to play at Gonzaga. Uh, you got to obviously be athletic enough to play at Gonzaga and check those boxes, but you have to kind of fit the mold of buying into the culture of I'm going to, I'm going to maximize my individual talents within a team framework of we're going to go win games and we're going to do it the right way. We're not going to put me over we um, to kind of, you know, bolster my career. It's all about buying in and fitting into the, the, the framework of the team. Like I mentioned, and Gonzaga's missed on some guys here there over the last few years. But when you look at the misses they've had, very few and far in between, and they've done a tremendous job of, of making sure guys fit that before they get there. And then they improve throughout their, the course of their career. Gonzaga legend Dan Dickell on BYU Sports Nation. The Zags are going to have a hard time summiting any farther because they're already, most people believe, the clear number one in the country and there's this idea that, well, maybe just to make sure everything goes smoothly getting into the NCAA tournament, they should just shut it down and not play in the West Coast Conference tournament because there are bigger prizes to be had, clearly. What's the Zag stance, in your opinion, on the approaching West Coast Conference tournament? Do you expect to see them in Vegas at the Orleans Arena? You know, that's an interesting 
question. And I, I've read a few things here or there. I, I have not had any conversations with, with Coach Few or Athletic Director Mike Roth. Um, you know, so I'm not kind of privy to any inside information. I think shutting it down would be the wrong decision. Um, obviously, their body of work and their resume, you know they're going to be in the NCAA tournament. Um, but if you look at how active Coach Few has been to try to add games while opponents have had pauses, you can tell that he's trying to get his team as many opportunities to play in big games. And he's been on record saying he owes it to Corey Kispert. He owes it to Drew Timmy. He owes it to these guys to provide them as normal of college basketball season as he can under the circumstances. Um, now, the second part of your question, as far as the, you know, WCC conference tournament, you know, that's an interesting one because you're, you're looking at sending anywhere from, you know, eight, nine, 10 teams to a same spot. And if one team by chance has it and spreads it, that, that could be uh, something that is a huge detriment to, you know, not only the team and the individual that has it, but the other teams in the league, in particular Gonzaga, if something were to happen. Um, so I, I, I know that there's got to be, conversations going on around that but I, I don't have any more information about what their true stance would be yeah it seems risky it just does like in the same ilk that we're talking about the NBA all-star game and it's like why would they play that you know um, I don't understand why they play the tournament outside of the legality of the TV rights and the money you want from that and you're not getting the gate for the attendance but it, it is a complicated thing so when you look at the uh, Gonzaga, we are constantly trying to make sure people understand how to say Gonzaga. Because the national th – it's like Oregon, you know? It's just the stupidest thing. <laughs> yeah. But Gonzaga is very uh, often there. And then Gonzaga no. is the one that happens. It's gone Zaga, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah. No, you're right. It's, it, it is one of those funny things. I mean – the easiest way that I've ever heard it described is do you zig and zag or do you zig and zog? Yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, people say good and zog. No, I mean, it's not that hard if you just look at it in those terms. And you're right, it's not gun, it's gone. Uh, it's a pretty easy, um, you know, explanation or it's a pretty easy pronunciation um, in, in my estimation. But again, you know, we live in a tiny pocket of the Pacific Northwest. You're going to get these... <laughs> you know, East Coast media elites that, you know, nothing good ever happens west of the Mississippi River. <laughs> what is this, 1830? Come on, guys. I can't Let's wait go. to watch the yeah. Zogs and the Cougars play tonight. It's going to be epic. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Dan. Uh, yeah, th for sure. Thanks for the time, man. Uh, we appreciate it, as always. It's been fun to talk basketball with you. We'll do it again soon. Absolutely. Hopefully tonight's a good game, and best of luck to uh, BYU the rest of the way. You got it, man. Dan Dickow on the Desert.